Homa here. I'm going to get you started with GORM IDE and I'll start you right from the beginning and what I'm going to do in this video is show you what GORM does just so you're familiar with it and I'm going to log in just so you see the process. One thing just to note that it's GORM IDE so if you just happen to go to GORM for whatever reason if you went to GORM.io and you went there first or you searched it out you'll see something like this and it just says GORM so you're going to want to go to GORM IDE to get started and this is where you're typically going to sign in and I'm going to sign in right now and I'm going to show you some things I've already done with a class from last spring 2019 so I'm going to sign in right now and once you log in you want to go to your dashboard and I have one container in here right now I think you can have five but you can only run one at a time with the free remember this is the free version and again the reason I started using GORM was I used to use Cloud9 for an online database class and it made it a little bit difficult when AWS took over Cloud9 it made it difficult for students to sign up I had to get approval for how many students I'd have ahead of time I'd have to send all their emails and it was just a lot easier to do this so I found this through through a Udemy course that Colt Steele was teaching so I checked it out and I had some issues in the beginning but I kind of worked through them so that's why I'm sharing it now so I'm gonna start my container now this is a PHP container so when I created it I chose PHP and my container name is GORM PHP and you can see that down here in my terminal now sometimes it loads like this if you just refresh that'll kind of go away sometimes it's a little slow getting started remember this is the free version so it's the slowest in terms of CPU usage and memory but here's my container now inside there I have a number of folders that I use for my class when we created exercises so I would use these to make demos so what I'm gonna do first is just show you a couple things in here now here's here's a folder called ex12 and you can see there's two files there's an HTML file and there's a PHP file now I can open these up by double clicking just like you could in any other cloud-based IDE for coding and they open up in tabs here now we have two files here and I just want to point out a couple things to see these files if I wanted to view my index HTML and see what it looks like uh, to actually view it and th this is one of the things it's a little harder to do this and there might there might be a place that's a little bit easier but the only way I know of so far is just to go here to running URL and port and when I go through this I'll show you how to do this but this is where you actually go to your your URL and I'm gonna click here and I'm getting connection refused and that's because I'm trying to open this up I don't have my web server working so it's not going to show me anything right now not even the HTML page so I want to go back here and I could cancel out of this because I already have it started up but what I want to do is start my web server so to do that I'm gonna go down here and I had to search all this stuff out and how to do it but if you're familiar with with working in terminal you can do this but I make a little file here I make my own little text file and I put it in there I use this so students knew how to do this and I'm gonna start my Apache server and I just copy this code here and I'll just put it here after my prompt and paste it and I'll start my Apache server and now my web server is working so if I go back here and I refresh it should show me my index page now this is my directory so I'd have to go in here to see what's in here because it's just going to the main directory if I went to my GORM it's going to show me the index page and they have like a starter page here this is just a starter page it's actually this one here it's neither of these that I was working in right now because I'd have to go into my ex12 folder what they do to start let me just point this out they just have a little practice page here just to see if it's reading PHP and it is so contents here that's PHP so it is reading PHP but right now I wouldn't be able to connect with my database server right now but I, it will read PHP so it is doing that so my application server my web server is actually running here so I'm gonna go here and I don't need this open right now and again here's my index file that I'm not looking at I'd have to go here and inside here here's my container name I'd have to go in here and put ex12 now if I have an index page either PHP or HTML it should go there so I'm gonna go here and there there it is and we did this little exercise where we we created a little form and we added characters to a database so that's what we did here now if I wanted to see the PHP file which is called display 12.php and and just just for the sake of putting them in I'm gonna put in here's Sean here's Sharkin and the species is a shark I did that last time and he's male because his name is Sean so if I wanted to add this character to a database to a MySQL database I can hit submit 
Now it doesn't work because we're not connecting to the database right now. Now the reason is, is because we don't have our database server running. And we could also do that. And I have this set up. It's service MySQL start. So this will get my database server running. So I'm going to copy this and go down here and make sure this is running. And now when I go back here, I'll refresh this. And it's still not working. So let me check my install and just make sure everything's OK. And you can see down here the install failed. So let me try that again. That's OK. Sometimes these things happen. So what I'll do is I'll just copy my install again and paste it. And now it's done. So it looks good. Now this should be working. So let me go back and refresh it. And now it works. OK, that's good that happened because you can see there's some little glitchy things that will happen now and then. And this is my database. So it connected with a MySQL database. It added, I guess it did it twice here, or I did it another time. I put another guy in there, Sean Sharkin, or whatever. I put him in there twice. So he, here he is at the end. That's the next one I created. If I wanted to go back here and refresh this and put like, I'll put in like Billy Bass or something. He's a, I'll just put a fish. And he's male, put Billy Bass in there and I'll hit submit. Now we got Billy Bass at the bottom here. So we're connecting with a MySQL database and we're retrieving that information back. So what's actually happening in here is we're using an index page with a form. Let's look at the form. The form is going to display12.php. Then it's going here and we're connecting to our database with PHP password, all that kind of stuff. It's doing all that PHP stuff. It's running this MySQLI connect function and all that kind of stuff and then it's returning our information on the page so that's what we're doing and we're doing this all in the cloud we're we don't have to download amps or mamp like i've used in the past we can do this all in here and the nice thing is too if you go over here they have this share thing down here and you can share the link you can make it editable and you could share a link. So my students were able to send me a link and then after I test it out, I could go in here. So if they have any problems, I could go in here and make sure they have everything set up. I could even put folders in here if they need so they don't have to download folders and put them in. I was able to do all that kind of stuff. So it made it a lot easier. I mean, it wasn't super easy, especially trying to do everything online, but it's really nice to be able to do this instead of having people at home in an online class download amps and then trying to, you know, trying to troubleshoot when they email me and say they have a problem with amps and I can't see anything that's going on unless they take screenshots or whatever so and, and then also sharing me a database I, they'd have to download their database send it and I'd have to put it in so it'd be really a problem so this this works really nice for that for people learning how to do things now it's not just for MySQL and PHP you could do all kinds of stuff you could do Java and Python and all kinds of things in here you could do your HTML and CSS and JavaScript all that kind of stuff there's loads of things you could do in here with GORM but I used it specifically for this so so we could do databases online. Now I created them in something called Python Anywhere, a lot of these, but you could create them here too. And we're also going to connect to PHP My Admin. If so you might say, well, you know, why don't we use something like PHP My Admin? We could do that here too, but I'm not going to show that in this video. I just want to show you what we can do here. We could connect to a database. And let me just point out one thing here before I end this video. Let me open one more page here in a separate tab. And here it is. Now, if I go here, and I put slash PHP my admin, it takes me into PHP my admin. There it is. I just had a refresh. It goes into PHP my admin, and I have my username, which is standard PHP my admin, and then also the standard password is root, which you can just use in there if you're using it for education, obviously. And I'll hit go. And I'll show you how to install this because you do have to install it through your terminal. But here's some databases in here. Here's my SpongeBob database that I was telling you about. And I could go into my characters, and you always get this ignore all for some reason. But here's my characters in my database. So you could manage databases in here with PHP My Admin. You could create databases. You could also, here's WordPress. I created uh, a WordPress install and did this. So it could also manage a WordPress database in here. So you can actually install WordPress. So a lot of cool things you could do in here. Just wanted to show what you can do with GORM. And it's all free. This is the free tier. So once you get used to it on where to go find the URLs, how to find PHP My Admin, how to do the installs, how to find the little glitchy things that might go wrong. Uh, I, I went through that in the spring with my students, so I can help you out with that. But just wanted to show you what you could do with GORM. It's really cool.